Let's see how strong those walls are. The trebuchet has to be calibrated. That's perfectly normal. I'll have the range in no time. Move. Move. Damn it, I have to get to Sir Divish. Sir, they're coming. There's no time. Someone bring water. Breathe, man. You'll be all right. Who's coming? There's an army on the way. And they're carrying the colors of Havel Medic, of Valdek. And they're very close. Havel Medic is surely not coming to help us. Not that bastard. I have a score to sell with him. Gentlemen, Toth's reinforcements are about to descend on us. That swine. How many men? We don't know exactly, but there are many. And they will probably be here by dawn. So soon? How is it that we knew nothing about this before? The whole land is in chaos. It's a wonder we can find out anything at all. If they attack from the rear... We'd be finished. Just as Toth has been planning. A sneaky weasel. He's been one step ahead of us the whole time. Not this time, though. What are you thinking? Robard, how do you think the weather will be tomorrow? Uh, well, sir, uh, if my joints don't deceive me, and they rarely do, it'll rain. It'll rain buckets. Here. We'll make a stand here, I and Radzig's men. You will wait until they charge us, and then strike them from the rear. Here, and here. If we succeed, we'll have it over and done with before they notice anything in town. It might just work, but we'll have to leave someone in the encampments in case they do come out of Talberg. A few men will be all I need. Well, that depends on whether you can hold out. We don't even know how many there are. We will hold out. I'll give the orders to my men. We will be ready. My part in the battle, sir. Again, sir. I wanted to go with the Scalets, man. I need more than that from you. More, sir? If we can't hold out at the quarry, we're finished. You, I, Hanish, and Radzik. And since Hanish is commanding the flank attack, Radzik is captive and I'm wounded, Captain Robard will be leading on the field. Of course. Who better? There's no question Robard's a good commander. But many of the men will be from Scalets. We need someone there who knows them and has their respect. Sir? I mean you, Henry. But... that is... I want to be in the vanguard. Now hear me well, Henry. There are whole cemeteries full of heroes who rushed into danger. And if the first human you meet runs you through, it won't be good for morale. Not to mention that Radzik would have my guts for garters. In the battle, you and a group of Scarlet's men will be concealed in the woods over the road. But sir, I think I should... Quiet! Don't underestimate the task I'm setting. You'll have to keep nervous men on a short reign and not attack too soon and then conduct the attack on the rear so fiercely and quickly that the foe has no chance to react. If the line should start to break, we need someone with their head firmly on their shoulders to keep control of the men. Hmm. Very well, sir. That's what I like to hear. When you're ready, go and join the Scalots men. 
They'll be mustering in the woods above the road to retain. If you thought you'd be spending the whole sea Just a little longer. Hold. Hold. Easy, man. Not yet. Thank <laughs> you. 
is their leader. What? This boy. You should show a little more respect, Divish. You'll need it when you kneel before Istvan. Oh, <laughs> now the pup shows his teeth. Hmm. Istvan, you say? Not Sir Istvan? Or Lord Toth? Just how intimate are the two of you? I know him. He's Eric, Toth's captain and right-hand man. Oh. Finally, some good news. Shackle him and guard him closely. Those bastards want to destroy our trebuchet. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bravo. Uh, the damage isn't too serious. So we can shoot? Not just yet. Sir, what are we waiting for? You've heard his threats, Robard. Do you want him to kill Radzik and my wife? We have to consider all our options. And it would be a shame to destroy the castle, too. But how do we get that rat out of there? Sir, I might have a solution. What about exchanging hostages? He was the captain at Vranjik, and he brought Istvan's reinforcements here. He seems to be on very um, intimate terms with Toth. He might be able to tell us something. And he might even be as valuable to his lord as Lady Stephanie and my father are to us. <laughs> You're your father's son, by God. You're a godson, lad. You're right. We'll interrogate this whore, son, and then decide what to do next. Come to my tent when you've rested. Am I imaginary? No, there is something mine. Well now, Eric. It is Eric, isn't it? Looks like the boot's on the other foot this time, doesn't it? Fuck you. You need to change your tone. If you start being nice, you might just come out of this alive. So now I'll ask you a few questions, and you'd better think carefully about how you answer them. Who is this Toth? He's an orphan, same as me. The Turks killed his parents, so he started killing Turks. Sigismund needed men like that, so Ishtavan ended up in his service. How did you meet him? He killed my parents. What? Toth killed your parents? You could never understand. They were weak. Ishtavan strong. He took better care of me than any father. What is he after? Are you really that clueless? To destroy Wenceslas's ally? You! How many men does he have in the castle? How should I know? There were nearly 70 of us at the beginning, but there's probably not even half left. But that's still more than there ever were in that castle. More than enough to defend it. Who does he take his orders from? Are you stupid? He works for Sigismund. Listen to me. Toth has hostages in the castle, and we have you. So, how about an exchange? Do you take him for a fool? Do you really think he'd give up the only thing he has that stops you from attacking? He'll never accept an exchange. You better pray he will, for your own sake. Because once we attack, you'll be worthless to us. And what do you suppose will happen to a worthless bandit? I won't waste any more time on you. You could have saved yourself, but apparently you value your master's skin more than your own. I don't need to save myself. Ishtavan will save me. And he'll kill every last one of you. Why should he save you? He'll sacrifice you, just like everyone in Vranik and Pribislavitz. You're nothing but a common bandit. You don't know anything. He'll come for me, and anyone who lays a finger on me will pay dearly. Now I'm curious. Why would he care that much about you? Could it be your lovers? You'd never understand. For a while there, I thought we'd get nothing out of him. But in the end, he spilled his guts. I thought you were much too easy on him. But it seems your approach was the right one. Well done, lad. 
Anyway, it's clear that young fellow is no ordinary brigand. And he believes Toth cares about him. You'll just have to see if the bastard cares as much about him as Divish does about his wife and you about your father. Well, Divish, I think the time has come to find out just how much Toth values our hostage. Do you want to parley with him yourself? I think I'll leave that to you, Hamish. So be it. I'll do my utmost. Bring the hostage below the battlements. Sir Istvan! What is it? Did our neighborly visit catch you unprepared? A little, but we've settled in nicely. And this fellow is enjoying our company so much, we simply can't get rid of him. It seems we are in similar situations. Perhaps it's time to send our respective guests home. Not a chance. Do you take me for a fucking fool? Be warned. If anything happens to Eric, I'll let every man jack here have his way with this bitch, and I'll dice Kobila into goulash meat. Nobly spoken, your grace. But for all I know, you may have done that already. Divish, I'm sorry. Greetings, friends. Fear not, Lord Toth is treating us like royalty. They're unharmed, as you can see. But don't try any tricks or they won't be for long, Hanush. It seems your lord doesn't place any great value in you, boy. Go to hell. Oh. <coughs> I'm sorry. It looks like it's not going to be that easy. Well, at least we know they're alive. I didn't expect much of it anyway. He won't harm them as long as we have this fellow. Well, friends, what do you suggest? I'd say we have no choice but to attack. Hmm. It's a great risk, Robard, with Stephanie and Radzig inside. I know how you feel, sir, but Toth is no fool. They are his last safeguard. He will do nothing to harm them until he is sure of victory. Would you be saying that if it were your wife inside? Or your father? Well, let me point out that we have no choice anyway. We don't have enough supplies to keep men here for weeks, while gangs of brigands and Sigismund's army roam the countryside. Hmm. Toth won't agree to an exchange, and even if he did, we'd have to let him go. With all his men, he'd be a thorn in our sides till Judgment Day. Sir, a message has arrived. Oh, what is it? Margrave Yobst is approaching with his retinue and wants to speak with you. Yobst, you say? All right. Mm. What is he doing here? Who's Yobst? Yobst of Luxembourg is cousin to King Wenceslaus and Sigismund. He's the Margrave of Moravia. Only a year ago, he was collaborating with Sigismund and the League of Lords. He betrayed King Wenceslas and his ally Prokop. Now, he's changed sides, appointed himself the leader of the rebellion against Sigismund, and wants to liberate Wenceslas. Whichever way the wind blows. Nevertheless, it seems the decision is made for us. We don't want Yobst camping with us in front of our own castle like a band of gypsies. Hmm. I'm afraid you're right, Hanush. All right. We'll let the men rest a while, and then attack. Come to me when everything is ready.
I'm glad you came. At your service, sir. I'm about to give the order to bombard Talmberg. And since it's mainly thanks to you that we still have a trebuchet, I think you should have the honor of the first shot. I'd be delighted. To smash my castle? I can't say I share your enthusiasm. Sorry, sir. I didn't mean it like that. There's nothing to it. The men will load the trebuchet. All you have to do is pull the lever. Well, I suppose I could manage that. Then we'll bombard Talmber for several days. Sir Robard will explain what comes next. Good luck to you. Load the trebuchet! Divish said, Sir Divish. <clears throat> Sir Divish said, You tell me what happens next. I? We're going to watch Istran shitting himself. That's all. For a few days at least. So if you have anything to attend to, now's the time. Just don't forget to come back. See you later. What do you think of Master Kieser? He definitely knows what he's doing. And all that wild talk of his, rockets and such like. I'd almost let him try it out, but on some other castle. Do you think there's any truth in it? I've never seen such weapons used, so I can't really judge. But if his ideas worked, they'd change the way we make war. He showed me some of the drawings he has with him. I don't know if he's a genius or a madman. There was precious little in it, and we could have lost everything. That's how it goes in war. But God stood by us. And in the end, they're nothing but a bunch of filthy cutthroats. They're sneak thieves and assassins. But does that make them real soldiers? Well, they're apt to wait till a man nips off into the bushes to relieve himself, lifts up his chainmail tunic and stab him in the back. Personally, I'd rather face a proper soldier. 
Because you know just who you're up against. That's probably why Toth is giving us such a hard time. I'm here. Can't you see we're still bombarding? You came too soon. Since Sir Divish's colors still aren't flying over Talonbrook, I suppose you'll be attacking. Just so. That Istran's a stubborn bastard. All right. When do we start? There's no reason to wait. Are you really ready? If you need to rest or anything, we can still wait. You won't have another chance until we've won the day. Or until your final rest. I'm ready. Glad to hear it. We're going to attack on two fronts. The north gate and the west wall, which will scale with ladders. The attack will be split into different stages. Taking the outer walls, the inner bailey, and finally the core of the castle and the tower. How are we going to attack the gate? We'll try to do as much damage as we can with the trebuchet first. Kieser claims he can even hit it directly. Even if that's true, we'll have to charge through a downpour of enemy arrows all the way to the portcullis. Portcullis? Fortunately, it's wooden, so we'll be able to break it down. But dealing with the defense in the bailey won't be easy. And what's the plan for attacking the west wall? First, we have to get men to the wall with ladders. Which is no easy matter under fire, so we'll need as many men covering them as possible. As soon as the ladders are in place, our foot soldiers will run up and try to scale the wall. Once a few of them get to the battlements, we should quickly gain the upper hand. How will we take the battlements? Either by scaling the west wall, or our men at the gate will help. If they can break through, that is. And the inner bailey? That will be tough. Even if we get through the gate and into the outer bailey, we're still a long way from victory. The castle is designed so we'll be like hens in a coop to anyone with a bow on the inner battlements. We'll have to either fight our way through, or somehow get around them. What about the living quarters? There, I'm worried most about the hostages. Once we're inside, Istvan will know defeat is inevitable, but we'll still have to fight for each and every room. I think I've heard everything I need to know. Do you want to join the attack on the walls or on the gate? Remember, many of the Scalot's men will follow you. It could make a big difference. I'll help with the attack on the walls. I'm proud of you, Henry. You've changed from an insolent pup into a tough, reliable fighter. And as God is my witness, we will kick those whore sons' arses. A village lad and an old soldier? <laughs> this man must be shaking in his boots. <laughs> if he's not shaking, then he doesn't know what he's got coming. Just one last thing, though. No matter how good the plan is, something always gets fucked up. Keep your eyes open. And take advantage of every chance. Help your comrades and don't go rushing in where you're outnumbered. We have to take the castle gradually, one position after another. I'll remember that. Good luck to you, stripling. Good luck to you, old soldier. Take care.
fuck's sake! Cut yourselves! <laughs>
Sir, we should give the order. Let's see if Istvan Toth can worm his way out of this one. Don't tempt fate, Hanush. Istvan! It's over! You want us to come and get you? I wouldn't advise that. Your friend Divish wants to see his wife alive again. And Sir Radzik? Are both hostages unharmed? For now, Hanush, unless circumstances change. Well, I'm glad to hear it. My guest is also safe and sound, but he's also quite keen to go home. I imagine you feel the same way. It's been a long time since you warmed yourself at your own hearth. I'm in no hurry. I've plenty of supplies here. Grand view and excellent company. What more could I want? Your freedom! Freedom? Freedom to get an arrow in the back? Sir, we're all noblemen here. All bound by honour. I give you my word as a knight and lord, and that of my companions. If you release Lady Stephanie and Sir Radzig, you may leave the castle with your men and go on your way unharmed. And just how far will we get? What good will it do me if your men attack us in the woods instead of here? If you give me your word of honour that you will leave and never return, I promise you safe passage to the boundary of this fiefdom. What happens after that is up to you and the will of God Almighty. Very well then, but I want a small safeguard. I'll give you her ladyship. But Radzig comes with me. I'll release him in scallets. Out of the question! Is our word not good enough for you? Is mine not good enough for you? I swear I'll release him when I get to a safe distance. I'll go with him, Hanush. Let the Lady Stephanie have her freedom now. Father! Don't worry, son. I trust Lord Toth's self-interest more than his word. He wouldn't be fool enough to harm me. If you're certain, Radzig, prepare horses and supplies and tell your men to pull back. We'll come down. You heard him. Get to work. And any man who breaks his truce answers to me. So are you really going to let them go? My word is my bond, Henry. He's a cutthroat and a liar. Good men are dead because of him. What's to stop us from skewering him as soon as he sets foot outside? Our honour. If you let him go, he'll do the same again. Or worse, God's justice will find him. And then, he'll get a taste of my mace. If we break our word of honor, we have none. And without honor, we are nothing. Never fear. Your father will be all right. We'll hunt down those vermin yet. Bring the horses. Here she is, as I promised. Not a hair on her head harmed. Divish. <laughs> Stephanie. Forgive me, husband. I'm sorry. For what? For letting them into the castle. Oh, come now, my dear. You're not to blame. I didn't know who he was. He said he was your friend. Never mind. Did he hurt you? No. I hope your word can be trusted. Certainly more than yours. If everything goes as agreed, I'll set Radzig free in Scalitz. If anyone tries to follow us, I'll kill him. We won't. My apologies for keeping you from your father, but you'll see each other soon enough. I almost forgot. Your sword. I expect you'll want it back after all the trouble you went to. Actually, you know what? I think I'll keep it. As a memento. This isn't over. I'll find you. I look forward to it. Yeah! the
battlements. We have to see which way they go. Oh, they really are heading for Scallets. Mount up, Henry. You've heard what he'll do if we follow them. We're not going to follow them. We just have to collect your father. Or do you want him to walk back here when they release him? Maybe I really could do something for Rate and his people. Something really big. But there'll be plenty of time for that later. This is quite a turnaround, isn't it? What do you mean? How long have we known each other? A few weeks? Something like that. Before that, I was chasing wenches around Rate and you were digging turnips. And now look at us. A pair of veterans. Uh, I was an apprentice blacksmith, not a turnip digger. Same difference, you silly bugger. What should I say to him? Don't worry. It'll come to you. You'll see. Well. I just hope he'll be there. Alive. Sneaking into yeah. panic all on your own? Well, what I mean is, hats off to you, Hal. You wouldn't catch me doing that. The truth is, I didn't think much about it. I just felt I had to do it. Noble, right? Yes. There's no sign of them. Move on. Ispan kept his word, sir. Not half as glad as I am, Your Grace. Well, we kept our word too. And now Toth has had his head start and he's fair game. Which way do they go? To the north, but I would be careful, Sir Hans. Fear not, Your Grace. I have twice as many men as he. <laughs> well, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure the two of you have a lot to say to each other. Let's go! I am. They treated me quite decently. Although they did steal my horse, so I'll have to go back on foot. It looks like it's all over. Not by a long shot. It won't be over until we get this mess cleared up. And catch that bastard. How could we let him go? Would you rather we killed him? Even if it meant Lady Stephanie and I died too? No, of course not. But what was to stop us from killing him after the exchange? Honor? Honor? If the word of honor of a nobleman could not be trusted, then he would never have agreed to the exchange. And where's the honor in abandoning your son? Hmm. You know how it is. We were young. It happened, and I couldn't marry a commoner. 
Then your father, I mean Martin, came along and took care of both of you. He knew it. What? That I was your father? Certainly. He was a great man. He took you as his own. And I always kept an eye on you. Of that you can be sure. I know so little about his past. He told you nothing. Oddly enough, even though you don't have his blood, you're very like him. When he was around your age, he became bored of his trade and set out to see the world. He lived through many adventures, even fought in a war. In a war? Yes, in Poland, I believe. And I don't think he cared much for it. That's why he wanted me to stay at home. He spent some time in Prague, then settled in Kuttenberg. But it seems he quarrelled with someone there and finally ended up here. You know the rest. I loved him, but even so, uh, I somehow always had a feeling I didn't quite fit in. It was in your blood, I suppose. <laughs> I lost the one thing I had left from him. Your sword. Ah, the sword. It's not my sword. It's yours. For a moment there, it was so near, yet so far. Oh, well, it can't be helped. It was almost within my grasp, but... Just then, I had something else on my mind. Well, I think we may yet have a chance to get it back. This business with Toth is not yet over, unfortunately. That's a chance I'd welcome. Not just to get the sword, but that bastard Istvan, too. And then I'll find that German whore son who taught Scalitz, and I'll slay him with it. I'll never forget his face. Or his name. Mark Wart von Aulitz. Those are noble intentions, son. But don't forget there are other things in this world that are worth living for. Like what? Look around you. Blue skies overhead, green grass underfoot, beautiful girls. Good wine. A few good friends and a fine steed under your backside. Those are things worth living for. Though I can't deny that swine who killed your mother must pay for what he did. But it's better not to dwell too much on that at the cost of those other things. On the subject of steeds, I think we'll have to ride like the Knights Templar. How's that? Two up. One day I'll tell you how they got their seal. You can take the front. It's like I always imagined it would be, teaching my boy to ride. Although it would be better if you were a little smaller. My word, it's all go today, isn't it? I think I know. It's Margrave Jobst. The king's cousin? I wonder what he wants. I guess we'll find out soon enough. <laughs>